I invited, I'm not even going to show you his face. I invited this guy to go fishing with me. I, I think I made a huge mistake. <laughs> Caleb C. Bass Quest in the house. Stay tuned for this video. It's going to be good. He is one of the absolute sticks on the TVA, specifically Chickamauga. But if you're fishing in fall and winter, this guy's going to have some tips for you that you are going to want to hear. to go fishing. Welcome to Mikey Balls Fishing! I have a guest for you, and he is not aptly dressed, dude. Like, honestly, if it was any other person, I would literally tell him to go home and change and come back. I got Caleb C. Bass Quest. Go check him out on YouTube. This is one of my good buddies who actually knew before I moved up here. What's your YouTube channel exactly in that? Bass Quest. Bass Quest. Bass Quest. Epic stick on Lake Chickamauga, uh, Spotted Bass Lakes up on... Is this Eastern Tennessee or yeah. Western Tennessee? <laughs> this is East Tennessee. East Tennessee. So we're, we're in East Tennessee. We're actually on Lake Nickajack. Uh, Caleb was nice enough. We, we guys, have, we've been talking about how fall and winter fishing, it can be really good, but it can be a grind. And Caleb was nice enough. He's like, Mike, come on out, dude. I'm going to take you around, show you some of the stuff that I do, kind of teach you some of the techniques. And he mentioned kind of in that phrase, punching. <laughs> And I said, Caleb, I'll be there tomorrow, dude. So, <laughs> so what we're going to do today is I'm going to kind of pick Caleb's brain, um, talk to him about some of the techniques that he uses, especially as we get, it was super cold today. There was frost, a little bit of ice on my truck and that, which means we're going into kind of winter. I'm going to pick his brain on some of the techniques that we're going to be using right now and using moving forward. And I'm really hoping we're going to catch some big bass out of this green stuff because this is the last stuff left. It kind of congregates the bass this time of year because there's not much grass left. And it's matted because it's topped off and Mikey loves that because they drop the water, it gets it gets high. So stay with us. Make sure to go and subscribe to Caleb at Bass Quest and uh, let's go fishing. Listen to me, yap in my mouth. <laughs> Caleb, 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 can you censor? <laughs> Caleb says, sometimes the big ones bite in the morning. Ooh. Caleb. Caleb! You know that was like five or six feet back too. So me and Caleb were just talking and Caleb's like, I'm like, dude, sometimes they don't bite till one o'clock. Caleb's like, sometimes you catch a big one in the morning. <laughs> Came right out. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Dude, that's a that. beautiful fish. That's dude, a way to get started, it. dude. Sending it. <gasps> you nice job, it. homie. You know what? Bam. It's it's the short pants, pants shorts. The shorts, shorts? The joint. What are these things? <laughs> Caleb! 30 pound braid, way back in there. Dude, Caleb, you're killing frog punching. Dude, these are freaking big fish. Look at that joker. On a fluorescent green frog. Yeah, thank you, Alex Rudd. Oh, really? Saw he put you on it? Well, I saw this frog in one of his thumbnails. I thought it looked really cool. And I saw it at Dayton Boat <laughs> I was like, I just want to throw it because it looks funky. So here's where we're at, guys. We, we push back into this pocket, and we're in actually shallower water than I thought we'd be in, probably like three to five feet. And what we've seen is on some of this sparser, you can see there's some sparse grass down here. I hope you guys can kind of see that. It's kind of like dying back. I don't even know what kind of grass it is, but it's dying back, and there's been a bunch of like schoolies on it. We've seen like little balls of shad, and then there'll be like a three pounder, crush them. And it'll happen for like five minutes, and then it stops. So we're gonna fish for some of those guys and try some, some smaller baits, maybe like a spinner bait. Um, um, it, I think Caleb's got like a swim bait tied up, like a little tiny swim bait. We're going to throw those around the sparser stuff. And then what we're going to do is, the theory is, is as the sun kind of like rises and gets super high, those jokers will push in. And what we got right here is one of those cheesy, thick, like goo mats. And actually Caleb's doing it right now. We're going to pick up a frog and maybe like a buzz bait or something and kind of get tight to that goo. Caleb, dude, they're swirling like right there. That's second time. 
and we're, we're gonna get a little more tight into the grass because I figure the bait and the fish are gonna get a little tighter, but they are hard to catch. As we've talked about before in the videos, they're, they're keying in on these little shad, these little thread fin and making a presentation. And it's extra challenging when you have grass around, making something that's like small enough and showing them something that they'll actually commit to eat, it's pretty tricky. Sometimes you almost have to fish like kind of volume. There's a bunch of fish in here, so we need to cover some water instead of sitting on one little pot of fish that we keep blowing, uh, that we see keep blowing up. Got her. I don't know. She tugged on it though. Oh yeah. Oh dear. Oh, what have I done? What have I done? What have I done? Oh, Caleb, I got Caleb's luck now. Oh dear, 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 dear. <laughs> Caleb, they call him the bass snatcher. Snatcher of the bass. No. All right. All right, Caleb. I'm all... Dude, she, she ate that spinnerbait. So things have kind of taken an interesting turn. So we start off the morning punching some mats, throwing some frogs, and Caleb was the star of the show. Dude caught like a four and a half, like punching mats, and then he caught a nice little like two and a half pounder on a frog. And since then, dude, it's been a grind. So we rolled into, we're in this little pocket right here. You can see there's some matted grass and I tried flipping some of it and it's just too gooey. And then all of a sudden Caleb's like, look over there, the birds. And then like, look at the bass. And then, yeah. So they're schooling in the backs of one of these pockets. And ironically, it's like the worst spot ever. So it's one thing that you can remember with kind of some of this fall and winter fishing is like, Everything might look the same, kind of like it does in Florida, but if you keep your eye out, Caleb was really like keying on it. He's like, dude, you almost have to see them before you fish for them because the grass all looks the same. The grass lines taper down the same. And then all of a sudden we saw some balls of bait and some schooling fish, but the biggest challenge has been catching them. I lost like a two pounder. Caleb missed a couple on his swim bait, but this is what I really want to show you because I want to get her released real quick. Yeah, hello, hello. It's a nice four for <laughs> And she's angry. And I caught it on, we just talked about a while ago. Well, come here, I wanna get you going. And then you're good to go. Come on, come on, come on. There you go. Check that joker out. That's not, dude, that's a broad fish. Very skinny, ironically. But let me get her. It could be if it, yeah, if it ate, right. Oh, let's get her released really quick. Go back to your, back to your place. So what I actually caught her on, we were talking about spinnerbaits in some early videos. And I mentioned how much I'm absolutely in love with this joker right here. And we have that mini bait problem, which is exactly what I talked about, but it's this mini me. Um, it's yeah. by Spot Sticker, but it's it's a compact, this is actually a painted blade bait. I think one of you guys in the comments mentioned, hey, yeah, pick up some painted blade ones. But it's it's just a very compact spinner bait, and I'm burning it, dude. We were trying to sit on these fish that we saw schooling and, and try to actually like throw a million baits at them, figure something out. And finally, Caleb was like, dude, what do you want to do? I'm like, well, I guess let's move around a little bit because we've seen them pop up in different areas. So we started just moving the bait around because of those, there's got to be like 50, 60 fish back here that we've seen. Yeah. Of those, there's going to be one or two stupid ones. So if we kind of like drift across, we make some... Find them. <laughs> yes, and we need to find the stupid ones because the smart ones, we can't catch those. <laughs> so we're just kind of drifting across this flat, super shallow, three to five feet. And um, I'm going to burn this blade, maybe throw a little bit of a frog, but we're seeing more fish than we can catch, right, Bog? Yes, it's so sad. But yeah, grab a spinner bait. You got a tiny bait? Grab a spinner bait. Not as big as some of the other ones we're seeing, guys, but we're finally catching them on a frog. Oh, I don't know how you got them. We're gonna get her back real quick. Just nice little two pounder. They're getting tied to that on their ass. That's all right, Caleb. You just you just stay, stay, Caleb. Well, the numbers are kicking up a little bit, guys. Caleb's working back there, but I'm starting to figure something out. What I'm actually doing, and I was just telling Caleb, you can see those cheese mats out there. I'm actually throwing the frog onto the mat about three or four foot in, and just slow twitching it out. And when I hit that edge of that mat, I just slow down and slow walk it. I'm actually running, this is a, a medium heavy rod. So it's not like your classic frog rod. And it allows me to kind of walk the frog in place. I don't know if it's a big deal, but 
I mean, that's two in a row after we haven't had a bite for like 30 minutes, so maybe there's something to it. I want to hit it like a better one. Dude, this fish, so this is a little better fish, and it just sucked it down, dude. Like, it didn't even, didn't even eat the thing. Coach, can you give me them pliers that are in front of you, bud? They're right in that tray, the red, go down straight in front of you by the exacto. Like the giant red ones right yeah. on my face? Those are the ones. I don't know. So, I wasn't around the camera. But I caught another one just before this one, and I was just saying, I'm running just this this coppers. This is one of my favorite frogs. It's the coppers or the live target. And literally, dude, I'm just throwing past that goo and bringing it to the edge, letting it sit. And you don't give it more than like two or three seconds on that edge. And so I always try to like walk you guys through kind of our process and what's actually happening. So first off, we haven't cranked up the boat in probably like two and a half hours. We got back in this pocket. Caleb freaking missed a couple. I think I caught a little guy, right? No, I missed a little guy on a spinnerbait. And I caught like a four or four and change on a spinnerbait on some of this like outside sparsy grass that we talked about. Actually, some of it's right below us. But just burning that, that mini mite or that mini me right through that. Oh, they're schooling right there, dude. So what actually happened though is as it's kind of like what we thought as that sun got higher the wind actually laid down as well and you'll have that happen in winter sometimes in the morning for some reason the wind just rails I don't know what it is but the wind laid down and the sun got high and what happened is if you guys look at here you have all that cheesy mat right there we got the sparse stuff right here and these fish push from some of the sparse stuff up onto the edge of that cheesy stuff and some of them are even like under there and we started catching them on a frog like really tied up next to that that edge and some of them were schooling right next to it but it almost seems like and Caleb was really observing and noticing this so we'd catch like like I think I caught four in a row I missed getting video of one but caught like four in a row and then it completely stopped and we didn't see any schooling we didn't see anything and then about 15 20 minutes later they started popping up again we caught a few more like it's it's weird because it almost is like cycles it's whether they're potting up the bait or something they seem to be locked into this tighter grass area but they almost seem to just kind of turn on for 10 minutes and then turn off for 20. turn on for 10 minutes turn off for 20. so it's, it's a little bit frustrating but some of the bass i know we, we always do fishing stories dude some of the fish that we've seen back here blowing up they're not like nine pounders, but dude, we've seen some fours, some fives. I think we even saw one that was like like six, six and change easy. Like there, there's some bigs back here, but getting them to bite and, and actually getting your bait at where it needs to be, when it needs to be there, is super tricky, but we're gonna keep on grinding it. Dude, just inching it along that edge. Dude, you guys, did you see how he smashed it? I mean, not a big one, but yes, Bob, you're excited. I'm excited. Everybody's excited. Get Bob. Yep, look at this bit. Oh. I don't know if I hooked him right. Same point, guys. So this is what frog fishing is on the TVA. Bob, why are you afraid of the bass fish? This is so much fun. <laughs> so Caleb's doing this float and fly technique. We're back where we caught some frogfish, and he's like, this is a way that, that I can kind of clean up some of these fish because it's such a small little presentation. It's a little tough to throw it on the grass, but he's basically got a giant leader, a little slip bobber right there, and yeah. some little minner kind of looking thing on yeah, the jig head. It's an oversized crappie jig is all it is. So we're crappie fishing for bass, but he was telling me it's a great way with, with these fish so keyed in. I've tried it a few times and I haven't been successful at it, but he said with these fish so keyed in on these little baits, you know, we, we definitely caught some on a frog right here and they had some big ones blow up and we missed them. But he's like, dude, if we need to go back and, and get some bites and can sort of clean up like all those fish that won't close the deal on the frog, they're gonna chew on this. So let's watch him do it. He's just shaking his rod tip just like that. Real and real slow, just and watching right. that float. And you do watch the float a little bit. Yeah. That is so cool. It's a good technique when you know exactly where fish are. If you got them pinned down, like it's not great for covering water or anything, but you've got a target 
or a trough like we yeah. got right here. This is literally just a small hole in the grass. It gives just enough open water for this technique to shine. That wind's got that float so far down, sometimes I'm not hitting something. Ooh, dude. Caleb's got himself a man fish. I didn't even see it. Well, better than the other ones I was catching, I think. Is that a bass? Oh yeah, Caleb. Oh yeah. That's old Stout Stouterson right there. I think Bog's afraid of your floating fly. <laughs> Too powerful. These guys are big old heads on them, dude. You are absolutely killing it with that thing. That's kind of dutiful. Bog, Bog, chill, buddy. Yes, that fish doesn't like you. I can guarantee that. <laughs> His eyes are like, oh my god. Yes, that's it, Bog. You're done. You're cut off, bro. Stealing your fish. That might actually work. Listen to you. I'll take any bite I can get. This is why these, you know, like these frostbite tournaments that are happening right now. I was winning like all of them last year. You guys were coming. I remember that. They were like, oh, you know, we worked our asses off. We got five fish, four fish. Get it. A better one. Stay on, stay on. Oh yeah. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna timber here. Oh, nice chunker. I had to steal a fish out from Caleb. He's killing him on this float and fly, but it's another frog bonker. And guys, this this pattern between the float and fly and the frog, like literally getting it. What a hilarious. Yeah, what a combo, dude. But get, oh. Yeah. Caleb's got one. Okay, Get in right next to that that little edge. They just they're either under it or they're pushing bait up into it. The wind's kind of blowing on it, but there's definitely some kind of, I mean, for lack of a better word, there's some kind of pattern thing going on. Pattern. So I was actually re-rigging a rod and putting a different bait on, and I looked down at the deck, and that guy was sitting on our deck. That's that's what the, like the little shad look like that that these guys are keyed in on. Bog wants to eat it, but you can see it's super tiny, dude, and that's why these little baits. We're just fishing real subtle with that frog has been like key. Oh, just shot it. <laughs> got him that time. Caleb's got a big old frog fish on, guys. Bring it. Bring it, Caleb. Bring it, boy. Oh, look at the gullet on that jugger. Oh, Caleb. <laughs> Oh, that's so awesome. They call him the deal closer and the Ooh. bog tail licker. Dude, oh. Caleb, that is how we like to close out a day. That is Bro. a stud, dude. Yes, yeah, oh. Man, what a pretty fish. <laughs> oh, bog, bog, that'd be nice. Guys, that is the way you want to end it. I always love ending on a big fish and it doesn't always work out that way, but that fish, literally ate that frog at the end of Caleb's cast, probably a good 30 feet back there. Smashed it. The best part about this story is it missed it on the cast before, and he missed it on the cast before. Dude, what an epic day. Like, Caleb is so insightful. Definitely go check him out. Caleb C. Bass Quest. It's Bass Quest, right? That's right. Bass Quest on YouTube. He's going to keep casting while, I, while I'm talking. Absolutely. But highlight of the day, I really wanted to punch some mats. Caleb squared one this morning out of the mats, punching, you know, using a heavy weight, one and a quarter, one and a half. Great way if you still have some junk mats, which are like blown in mats, or if you still have some grass that's still around that's topped off, especially as they drop the water. But the highlight really was this guy, that little um, live target frog, and then where's my spinner bait at? This guy, the mini me. Dude, that thing is absolutely mean. And we talked about it in the spinner bait video, like even though it's mini, it doesn't mean it catches mini fish. And even though it's really kind of a, a spotted bass bait, doesn't mean it doesn't catch largemouth, which it totally did. And then Caleb showed us a really cool technique. I definitely recommend you go back and look at that. You have some videos about uh, float and fly fishing on your channel. Go over to Caleb's channel if you want to learn more about float and fly fishing. It's actually going to come more into play as these water temps drop and these fish get 
just weird. You know, they're still eating the small bait. You can't really fish the grass because it's kind of gone. That float and fly technique can be killer. Bridges, um, little pockets and stuff like that. It's definitely something I'm gonna try on Smith Lake and for some spotted bass as well, because I know how much they like my little hair jig and even my little micro swim bait. So it's a perfect way to present that. But thank you guys for watching. Caleb, it's always a joy and I appreciate mm. your insights. Always have buddies who are good people, but can also teach you something about fishing and then you can share something with them. And then you all come away better anglers and you have a good time in the water, which is exactly yes. what we did today. Bog, you want to say goodbye? Bog, everybody say hi to Bog. Give a like for Bog. He, he life jacketed it all day. We're going to wrap this thing up. Thank you guys for watching and supporting the channel. Caleb, are you going to square up on one more big? I'll do it. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm down now. I'm on fire. If he does, you will see it. But tune in again next time, dude. Thank you guys for watching.